It's the only wrestling podcast on earth with two Major League Baseball All-Stars, Dimitri Young, one four-time Stanley Cup champion, and Darren McCarty, who's here, one X-Division champion, one Impact, what, writer, agent, producer, does it all for Impact, P.D. Williams. What's up? How's she going, eh? And then Lars Fredrickson. What's up, buddy, from Rancid? Yes. Guys, on this podcast, we have a super special guest. Pete, this is our second time talking to him. This is all their first times talking to him. A guy that I personally am a huge fan of because I know him as a person. And I figure at the end of this interview, everybody else will love him as much as we do. I know Dimitri and Lars are, are geeking out. DMAC is cool as ice over there. It's Rich Swan, Impact Champion. Rich, welcome to the show. Hey, baby. Thank you for having me. Thank champ you for is me. here. The champ yes, is sir. here. Yes, well, way sir. to go, Dennis. Oh, Dennis. Hold on. I... The real champ is here. The yes, real sir. champ is here. Exactly. And Dennis, you know what? I give you a lot of crap all the time, but uh, Petey, good job getting rich. Thanks, Rich. <laughs> what does it have to do with Dennis? <laughs> right. Hey, we got a lot to talk about. Petey, I thank you. I thank <laughs> you, Petey. Oh, Come thank on. you. How's hey, she you going, give eh? Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, Dennis. We got a lot to talk about. Let's kick this off. Let's Let, do this. Listen, I I want to start the question off with this one that I've been wondering. All of us as fans, we all put assumptions on being the world champion, and you have one of those daunting tasks right now of carrying the mantle, being the face of Impact in in this day and age of COVID with wrestling changing. How much difficult right now is being a champion now during COVID compared to maybe holding that mantle with the fans? You know, I wouldn't be able to uh, decipher the difference between the two of being a world champion while there's fans because I've never been world champion uh, being the face of a company uh, while there's a jam-packed house but now uh, experience, experiencing being world champion during this time uh, where there's no fans, but uh, people are looking at the message boards, looking at the internet, looking at uh, the, uh, what's it, like the uh, views on uh, television and everything like that, the ratings, um, you know, the pressure's on, but I invite that. I love it. You know what I'm saying? Like, just being out there and wrestling with nobody there, I still know that red light is on. And I know there's tens, thousands of people watching. So I'm going to go out there and give it my all and put my heart on the line. You know what I'm saying? Lars? Yeah, you know, one of the things, you know, but you kind of just mentioned a little bit about the pressure. But, you know, you are the face of this company at this point. And I'm just wondering, you know, because what's happening, I think what a lot of us are excited about as fans is this whole AEW Impact thing coming together. And it's kind of like, it, it's very reminiscent of the NWO's answer to the Attitude Era, right? And yeah, that, yeah, for sure. What I want to know is, do you feel the magnitude and the gravity of what's actually happening, you know, being the face of the company, I mean, this is a big fucking deal for wrestling. Man, and, it's huge. You know, you're kind of like front and center here, buddy. In the thick of things. You know, I totally feel like the momentum changed. Like as soon as Don Callis made that announcement after Kenny Omega, uh, who's been revered in the professional wrestling industry for quite some time now, who's looked at as one of the greatest uh, once they made that announcement that they were going to come to Impact, you know, everybody said, whoa, wait, wait, what? And then, you know what I mean? Like, you could feel the change. And, you know, as you can see the pro progression, like with uh, myself and the machine guns, when we all, you know, came together and uh, it was going to form that crazy six man. Uh, and it, you know, changed a little bit, but like, that was the buzz of the wrestling universe for a bit. You know what I'm saying? And I'm grateful to be a part of something like that. And I just want to show out as hard as I can, you know, just being put in that opportunity. I want to, you know, show the world that, you know, they didn't just give Rich Swan a, a world title, you know, just as a pity or something. He worked for it. He busted his ass for this. And you know what I'm saying? I'm going to take every opportunity. You know, they're going to give me an inch. I'm going to take a mile. 
<laughs> I mean, because one of the things is when I when I first started seeing your stuff, I mean, you were always kind of connected with the light heavyweight cruiserweight divisions and yes, sir. you know, and you had these, uh, these this match with Sammy Callahan. Uh, yes, I want to say it was like in the maybe the mid uh, 2012, something like that. And uh, you looked a lot different. Yeah, looked, yeah. Looked <laughs> but, uh, hey, I but, it. but I mean, you know, you have this chemistry with this guy. And, and, and I know a lot of these guys that you were in that uh, company with and all the companies that you have been with. Um, I guess the question is, it's like, you know, the transition of coming out of the light heavyweight cruiserweight sort of divisions and now you're world champion and you know what's the difference do you do you do your matches a little bit differently because cruiserweights do a certain thing and and world champions do a certain thing historically so i'm just wondering if, if there's any psychology for you yeah definitely i feel like uh with every opponent uh the size difference definitely changes the dy the dynamic of a match you know, like when I'm going in there with somebody who's my size, definitely the goal is to put on an, uh, an exciting match and, you know, high flying and, you know, you know, try to wild people. But if I'm in there with somebody bigger, I want to make it make sense. I ain't going to, you know, try to do anything that's out of the realms that doesn't make sense. I want to tell a story and I want to show people that I have that wide range, you know, and I, I love that, you know. I love, you know, challenges, uh, wrestling somebody that, you know, could be seven feet tall, 300 pounds or somebody that's, you know, a six foot, like 200 something, you know what I'm saying? I'm a small guy. So, you know, uh, it's not going to come too many times where I'm going to be in there with somebody who's my size, like a Trey Miguel, uh, you know, something like that. Or, you know, at the time, I think the match you're talking about Sammy Callahan, who's that rough, tough, you know, he was in that junior heavyweight realm at that time, CZW. I think that match was at the ECW arena. I think, it yeah. might have been, yeah. It was like the last uh, arena. I remember show. Sammy was wearing some goofy outfit. Yeah, he had, he had the singlet with the, 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 the little scratches. The little scratches. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, man. What is... uh? Chris, what is one thing that uh, you were talking earlier about uh, performing with no crowd? What is something maybe as the fans sitting at home watching don't realize it's harder? Like, is it a timing thing? Is it uh, because you can't feed off the emotions of the crowd? Is it more communication these days inside the ring where the referee, it's got to be the three-man unit? Like, what is something that maybe we don't see at home that you're like, wow, I didn't really realize this before? You know, I feel like you got to keep everything so tight, you know, especially in a in a one on one capacity and with the referee uh, in there. And the referee is very important uh, in a match. Um, you know, we all feed off of each other and we all work with each other, you know, to you know, get that, create that, those special moments. And, you know, with the special moments, though, it's hard to make them mean something because just like you said, you can't feed off the crowd. You don't have, you don't have the people to, you know, gauge that uh, perfect emotion, you know, that you want to display, you know? So sometimes you got to kind of like rewind in the back of your mind, like, man, uh, when I was in this situation, how did I feel? How was the crowd? And you got to kind of try to, you know, bring yeah. that out. You know what I'm saying? And try to use that. Uh, but at the same time, when you're in there getting hit and getting slammed and, you know, getting thrown around and slung around, you don't have that adrenaline either. You don't have those people going, yeah, baby, da, da, da. come on, get up. And you might be feeling it the worst you've ever felt in a match. You know what I'm saying? And you know, oh, wait, where's the people clapping? Where are they at? You know, that's the big difference for me. Here, Just on that, just to, last, to piggyback off that, has there been that you remember a fan in the stands, whether maybe it's an old lady or something, and you just took a, like a, a vicious bump 
or something where and you you weren't feeling it that day because maybe it was at some hall or something but then you're like immediately drawn back in because you are you are one of the people's wrestlers man you are all about it the vibe you know a lot That's... of the stuff you know i always thought that if there was a fourth fourth member of new day that you would be like perfect in that, that you know I, so like you know what yeah, i mean because yeah. i love that and that's what i love about the wrestling because you know how to put guys over and you know that it's bigger so I was there ever that. like an old lady back in biloxi mississippi or Man. something you remember that let's see there has to and this one involves sammy callahan too it was at <laughs> this was at a, a place they tore it down. It was in North Carolina, the CWF uh, Mid Atlantic Arena, and like there were maybe about uh, maybe a hundred people max, but it was like jam packed in there. And Sammy, the match started off, and like we had did like a string of shows, and we were driving from like what, what did we do? We did North Carolina. Uh, Atlanta and then Miami uh, but so we drove all those places but like that was the last one and we were so tired but we started the match off he power bombed me on the stage and then got into the ring and I was like oh why did I thought you were gonna power bomb <laughs> in the ring I didn't know and he didn't explain it and, and like so he power bombed me on the stage I'm done and I look, <laughs> and I look up. I look up, and this kid's like, "He's not getting up. He's not getting up." We still, and we still had like maybe like fifteen more minutes. And Sammy spits from the middle of the ring to the damn entrance way, and it hits me right in my forehead. Oh. And, I, <laughs> and that little kid was like, "Oh, he just spit a loogie on you. What are you gonna do?" I was like, "You know what." Man, you know what? I'm getting up. Fuck this. I'm getting up. Boom, get up. I'm getting to the ring. Boom, power bombs me again. The crowd loses it because he oh. power bombs me again. Oh. Freaking look at I look at the kid again. He's like his face has changed. It's like he went from like oh like kind of like oh you're not gonna do nothing to oh this kid. He's devastated or like oh he's not getting up for real. He I think he murdered him. One, oh. <laughs> one, two. Big kick up, and I look at that kid's face, and he's like, "Oh, he kicked up!" <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just those three changes of my emotion. I'm like, "All right, we're in this." And the crowd, they were hype. They were so hype. I love oh. that stuff. I miss that so much. Uh, hey, wow, Rich. I Rich, I'm I'm a I'm a fan as well. Of course, you know we both are. Uh, and people and um I, yes. I look like yo I look like your man Willie Mack. You look like yes, my sir. former teammate Pokey Reese. Yes, sir. And, uh, hey. we was th and we were thick as thieves as ball players. So uh I'm big on, on relationships and stuff like that. Can you tell me the history of you and Willie Mack? Because I love both y'all together in Impact. Y'all have that, that spice of energy that and that's why I like Impact. I love the energy behind it, even though you have nobody in the stands. It's, like you have people in the stands and yeah, back to Willie Mack. You know, I love that dude too. Man, he's so awesome, man. The first time I met him was at PWG. Uh, I was supposed to be on a Dragon Gate show and uh, I had missed my flight. Uh, I was about, I was coming from Japan and I couldn't make the connection flight. Like they flew me, I flew from Japan to to Philadelphia and then from Philly, it was supposed to be from Philly to Cali. And so that doesn't I, even make sense, Rich. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why they send you over to California? Yeah, I know. Well, because because they uh uh the company that I was working for, they just flew me home and I tried to tell them that I had a show, so I had to, you know, get it worked out. Uh, but I couldn't make that flight. And but so there was another show. Um and I got on the PWG show and I met Willie Mack and we just clicked like that. You know what I'm saying? And uh, every time we'd be on the show, we just be cutting up, you know what I mean? Still to this day, you know, we just bring up old wrestling stuff that, you know, we remember as kids, you know what I mean? And like, we share like that same type of passion, you know what I mean? And we've, 
had that same type of upbringing. So we just united like that. You know what I mean? Like we just connect. It's I bet a, y'all are put. The, I bet y'all put together one hell of a match. But man, I, man. I hope that I hope that y'all don't do the breakup like they always do, and somebody oh. turns into a heel. I like if y'all. You know what I'm like saying? Friendly, like you know what, Willie. Let's have a match for the belt, you know what I'm saying, for the title. I would love that, you know what I'm saying? I think he's one of the most deserving, you know, people of a world championship title shot, you know what I'm saying? Not only is he a great person, but he's an amazing athlete, you know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Somebody his size shouldn't be able to do what he does, and he does it, and he flies through the air like somebody, you know what I'm saying? Like... Yeah, that boy crazy. <laughs> you know, his skills are just off the wall. Uh, you know? No Surrender, February 13th. Uh, coming up, you're facing Tommy Dreamer. We'll get to Tommy Dreamer a little bit later. Uh, PD, Rich, a few years ago, you, the three of us, were in Toronto sitting in a little wine closet somewhere recording a podcast. And I had asked you, and I think we were talking about the lack of African-American champions in wrestling at that time. And you told me to bring this question up whenever you become Impact Champion. So here we are now, many years later, you're Impact Champion in an industry that lacks African-American champions. Is that in the back of your mind as you carry this belt? What can you do as an African-American champion to separate yourself from every other champion to promote diversity in this industry? You know what I'm saying? Like being a champion of, you know, culture, you know what I mean? I just want to show that anybody can do it. And, you know, just being from my upbringing, you know, people would, you know, look at somebody as myself as and, and think that, you know, I would have never gotten to something like this. And I just want to be an example to somebody, you know, not only uh, that would live in my situation, you know, and kids of African-American descent or, you know what I mean? Like Spanish, his, Hispanic, you know, white kids. It doesn't matter. I want to show the world that we can all do this together. And that's my message, you know what I mean? And, you know, stop, you know, diversifying everybody come together, you know what I mean? Because, you know, I feel like there's a lot of social engineering out there you know, that, you know, causes divide. And when you divide, others conquer. And we don't want to be conquered. We want to, you know, reign supreme. And that's what I want to do. I want to show that we can all reign supreme, you know? Beautifully said. Thank you. So who is your favorite wrestler growing up? Man, I had a couple. uh, Say it, Rich, and then I'm going to make you... uh... Do the impression on that. <laughs> I know, I got, I, you know oh, I'm gonna ask. I, so. I got I got Ray Mysterio, I got uh Eddie Guerrero, AJ Styles, and then Brett the Hitman Hart. Well, Brett, are, Brett, are you with us today? Let's let's uh guys uh, let me introduce you to Brett Hart. You know, uh it's about time the uh, <laughs> you guys had me on here. You know, I feel like everybody's against me. <laughs> Who's your brother? My brother Owen. <laughs> yeah. Wait, can we get Steiner talking to Bret Hart? No, actually, it's better when <laughs> when uh, Rich does Bret Hart talking to Teddy Hart, actually. I, I love both those impressions. <laughs> yeah. oh, I don't know if you have it in you right now to do it, Rich, yeah. but I'd love to hear it. You know, uh, Teddy's not here right now, but, uh, <laughs> you know... If you want me to teach you about a sharpshooter, uh, we <laughs> I put you on the spot. So, the, the Canadians give you a round of applause, bro. Guys, yeah, just hey, just so you know, and just so everybody knows, I make them do this all the time, and it's uh, man, it may I, I'll be having a bad day or stressful day, whatever it is, run around with my head chopped off, and then I'm I, Rich, come here. Hey man, you, you know what I need, and he does the Brett Hart, he does the Teddy Hart, and it is just always, man. No matter what. What you doing. want my uncle to tell you about Stone Cold Steve Austin? <laughs> That's Teddy right there for those that don't know. <laughs> All right, no, Rich, I got a serious question though. We'll we'll we'll, 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 <laughs> we'll change subjects. Awesome impression, but all right, and I'll I'll kind of spill the beans uh, in a second here, but 
Um, I want to hear your answer first. So when do you feel like, you know, we'll just say management um, realized or came to, I guess the realization that, Oh, this guy could be our next world champion. Like what, when do you think that match happened? I, I know when it clicked for me, cause I was right there next to them when they said it, but when do you think that was, you know, I never really try to gauge too much into the politics or into like what the office thinks. I just try to go in, you know, come into the locker room, you know, say what's up to everybody, do what I do in the ring. You know, if it, you know, gets me to a spot, it gets me to a spot. But if I was to have to take a, a, a guess, it would probably be like in the elimination challenge. I wrestled with uh, Michael Elgin, uh, Moose, and uh, I want to say Brian Cage for about over 50 minutes or something like that. And uh, I think after that, they kind of started being like, all right, maybe we got something. And, you know, I just wanted to go out there and just, I was like, oh, I'm in this time. All right, I'm going to take advantage of it, you know. So I guess I'm not spilling the beans then. So I was in the truck when that happened. That that match actually, it was in Windsor. Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah, I mean, just everything that you did in that match, it was gold. And I could just hear um, you know, the people in management saying like, wow, like he's the MVP of, of this match. Like you really were like, you weren't even supposed to be in there that long. I think it was rearranged and then to, to your benefit. And yeah. then that's, that, that's exactly it. And I think that was the transition. Everybody has that performance. And I believe, you know, I truly do. I, I age in that match. And I remember I had to keep yeah. track. Of your, the Josh was like, Hey, let's get a time. How long is, uh, you know, uh, rich been in there. I'm like, uh, okay. It's a four minute commercial, uh, 25 minutes. He's at 25 <laughs> minutes now, you know? So it, it was a star making performance. Not that you weren't already a star. Hey, um, but I appreciate it. That, that was it right there. And I think that's what solidified. And that was like a year and a half ago and you're yeah. the champ now. So. I appreciate that, man. That like that was definitely some hard work. It was that deep grinded, but again, I definitely Bleeding. had you were yeah. big. Big Mike put the work on a brother. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, and there was a couple fans like, is that is that that's fake blood? He's got ketchup in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, sit I'm sitting back. I'm pulling my lip down and I, my tooth is all like because he broke my tooth down that Ooh. was already broken in the back and that's why it was like busted so much and i was just sucking it out and i was like oh yeah oh yeah i'm bleeding he got me he got me but man again i had those people and that changed the moment you know I'm right. sure here in a second we'll we'll go back to wrestling, but a little Canadian birdie once told me that you are a massive fan of Lars. And here on the show, we love to sit back and watch kind of the wrestlers who come on at times geek out over talking to some of these guys because I do it every show. I get I get to sit here with Major League Baseball players, Stanley Cup, Lars, Petey. I mean, can you can you talk a little bit about Rancid and the infected it's had on you? You know, Bro, let me tell you something. The the look, the talent, the oh, here it comes. You know what I mean? I love it. Uh oh, you know? oh, I know. I tuned in for a reason Saturday night. <laughs> I just had to pull it out because people be inspiring. You know what I'm saying? Hey, 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 rich, rich, rich. You know what well, actually, Lars should probably say something. He's the musician here. What do you think? That, uh, now I'm afraid of, for my job. <laughs> no. <laughs> you ain't got the... <laughs> any, hey, anybody got any requests? Like, like maybe 30 seconds of a song? Anybody? I got one if you guys don't. 
Yeah, do it. Well, let's say just, anything. Where is the concert, man? We need some live music. All right, live music, Rich. Let's hear. Uh, put it through the calculator. Uh, let's do Incubus uh, Drive. Do it. Bad taste oh, nice. music, PD. Let's see, oh, man. We, <laughs> we both like this. Walk we both. now from the podcast for that. I, sorry, sorry. I'm, Out of I'm, all I'm, the songs, yeah, that's some I, cool. I've heard him jam to this one before, and I, I love it. So, man, let's see. My guitar is all out of tune and stuff. Oh, you're a true musician, bro. <laughs> Dennis, we'll edit this part out. No way. <laughs> <laughs> I love sound check. This is where I get my job back. Bravo. <laughs> yeah. Hey, this would be cool around a bonfire with some of that right. Mac. Some of that. 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 Some have you ever thought about like incorporating your love for music into like your Ritzwan character? Oh my- man, I hate to use like a, a honky tonk man or an Elias kind of thing. You know, I used to before Elias. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm gonna go out here. I ain't gonna try and sound salty or that. I ain't salty. He kills it. Uh, but like back, like in 2010 and 2011, 2012. Uh, I was using a character to where um, it was me, Johnny Gargano, and Chuck Taylor, and we were called Ronan. And uh, I made a song that was called Ronan Baby. And uh, basically, I just uh, ripped off of the Rocky Take It Back. A do 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 do, but take it back. A do 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 do, but take it back. That. And, um, but so I'd be rocking the guitar you know what i'm saying and i'd carry that and that was in a uh, dragon gate usa and in pwg and uh it kind of got a little jacked i don't know but you know i didn't come up with it you know there was honky tonk man before me there was jeff Jarrett before me there was you know what i'm saying so many other great musicians that displayed their you know uh, yeah, talent. The, the big difference, though, there is that you can actually play. That's exactly. Hey, what I was hey, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, man. I, I'm hey. sorry, bro, but if you, if we got the fucking honky tonk man on here, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like fucking boogie woogie classics, he would just he would. Just I'm the honky tonk man. Yes. He was cool. He was cocky. And he was bad. He was bad. He was bad, man. <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. Well, I'm, I'm um, I wanted to know um, just about your future. You know, 10, down, 10 years down the road, where, where do you see yourself? Because right now you're on top and everybody's celebrating Tommy Dreamer's birthday on the 13th of February. Isn't somebody's um, two days after that? Yeah, it is my birthday two days after. You know? <laughs> hey, Happy man. Ho- hey, I, I appreciate that. Hopefully, I'll be celebrating that still with the Impact Gold, you know what I'm saying? But uh, where I see myself 10 years down the line, you know, who's to know? Because uh, especially now after suffering one of the, you know, most severe injuries I've ever, you know, uh, suffered, you know, broke my fibula my whole foot like turned around the Ooh. other way my ankle just lodged up into my my calf my l4 or what's it l5 and 6 and my back was fractured so like you never know where you'll be in 4 months 5 months 10 months 
you know so i i don't try to put uh a you know label on where my future is going to be in professional wrestling but what i do you know i try to you know set goals of where i could be and where i you know strive and you know have aspirations to be maybe a producer maybe still working in the wrestling business behind the scenes you know but at the same time you never know how long your body can hold up and do this so you never know i want to just go out and live it to the fullest amen well i mean you know it's some of the stuff, stuff that you did with eric young um around all this i mean this was some of the best tv i saw and you know the the the, the you guys made me book i don't know how how you are personally in real in you know outside of the ring or whatever but you guys made me believe that you hated each other's guts with a passion yeah and i don't know what your relationship is with him but uh if it's a good one how do you hate a, a dude that you like i mean how does what is it what's the process do you find like one little annoying thing about him and concentrate on that and go from there or what do you do i feel i feel like it's almost like a movie like if you know what i'm saying Al Pacino, when he turns into Scarface, he don't really, you know what I'm saying? He doesn't hate, you know, the people that he's talking to like that cussing at, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like, all right, we're right, we're right now in this heated rivalry. I'm about to flip this switch. And I feel like from the people that trained me, you know what I'm saying? They were very old school and they were like, if you're this character, you got to believe 100% that you're this person. So Richard Swan, you know, I am happy. I am, you know, a happy-go-lucky guy. I like to play music and stuff. But Rich Swan, here's this guy who tried to break my foot <laughs> again. So that you got to take that emotion. And then you take something in real life of somebody that's tried to screw you like that in that same type of situation and you tear that energy and you flip that and you use that. That's what, that's how I look at it. That's how I take it. You know, that that's interesting because you're in an industry now where 99% of the wrestlers want to be Hills because it's the cool thing. You can do so much more with the character, but you're just one of those guys we look at and go, there's no way this guy can be a Hill. He's too smiley, too happy. Does that yeah. go through your mind in the evolution of the Rich Swan character of, can I pull this off? Do I want to pull this off as a heel? You know, uh, I'd love to uh, show that side of my character. I know I could. Um, I've uh, shown it a little bit in uh, Combat Zone Wrestling or in uh, Major League Wrestling, uh, but that was just a little taste. Uh, you know, you never know what could happen and impact down the line. Somebody might make me flip. I might join, you know, BBK. You know, thinking of Eric Young, you know, <laughs> like he might make me flip. You know what I'm saying? Make me see a different light. You know, we got our boss walking around, parading around with the AEW World Champion. You know what I'm saying? That's you know what I'm saying? Like, wait a minute. You know? That guy's going absolutely berserk over here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, Rich, you know, I, I know you. I know you, Rich. Hold on, wait, man. Uh, this is the guy who's saying uh, he's the real world champion. Now, you beat me, Rich, didn't you? You know, I just, those little thoughts, you know? <laughs> like, I'm like, wait a minute. What? You got a point, though. Time out. Time out. Yeah. You know, those little points. You never know. Can, can we get some Pearl Jam out of you? Oh. Kid Rock from I, Detroit. I, <laughs> you want some you want some Pearl Jam? I want some Pearl Jam. Kid, would you would you would you do a little Pearl Jam for me? Dennis, just so you know, Lars could probably attest. Pearl, Pearl Jam's not really like an acoustic, like strum along type of band. You know, like, <laughs> Dennis wouldn't know uh, that, Peter. Uh, you should know I'm that. Kid Rock. Oh, Rock yeah, let's see. I'm trying. Y'all got me on the spot. I'm trying to sit back and think. All of the something. notes is that? Here, yeah, let's. Here, let's see. I got. I got something. Yanni, should we do Yanni, guys? I mean. No 
one knows what it's like to be the bad man, to be the sad man, the end but my dream is the opportunity to hang my conscience I am not worse but only my dream yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Well, that that trumped the Pearl Jam. Uh, yeah. I was sitting there trying to think because the only thing that can come to mind was <laughs> I'm like, uh, I ain't got an electric guitar for that. Oh man. Uh, hey, so so rich let's get back to impact for one second so uh i don't know if these guys told you or not but uh we had tommy dreamer on uh, a couple days ago uh, you know he he mentioned that uh, you challenged him uh on his 50th birthday for your title like you were the champion challenged the challenger um however you haven't accepted yet what, what are your thoughts going into it like uh, it's you know how that's going to go well actually i think tommy hasn't accepted yet but what do you think he's going to say you know i think that he's probably a little baffled by the you know request of mine to challenge him for my title and uh one thing i see in him right now he's something of uh a terry funk uh of our generation somebody who you know what i'm saying who's seen a lot, who's been through a lot of the companies. He's been uh, at the top, you know, and um, he brings his guidance. He brings his knowledge of professional wrestling, you know, in the back to, you know, a younger generation like myself. And, uh, you know, I feel like that needs to be shown and I want to showcase that. And I want to, you know, have a match with Tommy Dreamer, you know what I mean, that people are going to talk about, you know, for decades. And if he beats me, he beats me, you know what I'm saying? And I want to have that chance. I want to give him that chance. And he he walks around, like, with that, you know, that type of presence. So I want to give him a chance to prove that on, on you know, Impact Plus, you know. Mm. Very good. Very good. Uh, did you know, Rich, did you know, because I learned this, that Tommy Dreamer has never had a surgery, so maybe you could give him that for his birthday. Hey, man, you know, I, I don't want to give him a surgery. I don't want to put no, nobody. No. But, he, <laughs> but to your, but, but maybe to the point of the question is, can you believe that a guy, the Terry Funk of our, of your, of the, our generation, I, I'm the same age as him, so whatever else has that, that blew me away. He should yeah. have had a lot of surgeries, but the fact Something. he's still doing it, right? Yeah, doing it's crazy. it good. It's crazy. It's crazy. The man fell out of the eagle's nest in the ECW ring. Not fell out, was choke slammed out <laughs> through table. <laughs> and that's just, you know, just one of the, you know, little things that the guy's been through. And uh, it's crazy that he's still moving around. He's still out there doing old school rule matches, but you know what I'm saying? They all are amazing. They're always entertaining to watch, and he's always got sense with that. You know what I mean? And and then the guy can go out and he can still put on a, a regular traditional wrestling match. And you know what I mean? I just wanna I wanna have that opportunity with Tommy. You know, like. That's going to be, it's going to be an opportunity to, to show the world that, you know, I can, you know, defend this championship at any level, you know, and uh, against a guy like Tommy Dreamer with all his accolades, you know what I mean? Like, it's going to be fun. It's going to be dope. Hey, hey Rich, you know, I, I, listening to you talk, you got a whole lot of energy. You got a lot to say. You like it to have that kind of freedom on impact to be able to cut promos and be able to be you when you talk as opposed to, um, you know, being like you're in the play and have to read a script. You know, uh, at the same time, um, 
and when I was in, you know, the other place in New York, Stanford, whatever you never heard of that. It was to, uh, you know, call it. Uh, I still was able to be myself. I was still Red Swan. I didn't, you know, of course I got, you know, scripts and lines and everything, but, you know, I didn't feel like anybody was ever trying to change me. And I'm not being like a toe to the line type guy or, oh, I, it's, that's just a matter of fact. I feel like everybody, you know, over on that end has their own experiences. And with mine, you know, I just, you know, I didn't have a bad experience. Uh, but and the difference is, though, you do have freedom with impact. You're, you're getting, you know what I'm saying, what you get when, when you're saying stuff, because, you know, we're all, we're all a team. And but at the same time, you're free to, you know, say things how you would say it or interject and how, hey, maybe it might work better if we do like this because we're all working together to put on the best product that we can put on. And, um, you know, I feel that and I feel, you know, with impact and with the freedom with it, like, that's how, you know, we rock, <laughs> like, it's just it's just we're all a team trying to put on the best we can put on, you know. Now this question's for Petey. As a producer, how different is it to produce a Rich Swan match from anyone else's? Yeah, it's probably the easiest match <laughs> to produce. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> no. And, and Rich, like I, I've been Rich's uh, agent for for many matches, and I you know, we've only worked each other like what twice, Rich? Yeah, maybe? three times. Yeah. Yep. You know, and, and I, since I'm always a part of his matches, like even like when we did the Kenny Omega one, I'm like, hey, at the end, can you do the boom, boom? Like I get into yeah. it too, because I know his stuff. I know like how the fans react to it. And I, he's probably already thinking it too. Like, yeah, I was going to do that anyways, Petey. But I'm like, yeah, yeah, make sure, make sure you get that in. It's it's super easy. Like it's I, it, yeah. one of the easiest guys to produce. I mean, I don't know how to explain it more than that especially like i i know his stuff he takes his time like it, it's it's a pleasure to produce him and it's easy i guess it's a i don't pleasure. know a way to put it like i appreciate that it's a pleasure you know yeah. what i'm saying working with you that that's all i want to do is be easy to work with you know that's the only way you you know like will ever you know prosper in anything if you you know just make things come easy you know like don't be difficult and I appreciate things like that when you bring up stuff like, cause sometimes I'm not thinking about it. Like you're thinking about so much stuff. And then when you said that, I was, Oh, you know what? Yes, that's great right yeah. there. But that's why, you know what I mean? That's why you need guidance. You know what I mean? Like everybody needs that, you know? And sometimes, and, and Rich keeps me in check too. Like sometimes I'm like, Hey, why don't you do that thing where you go boom, 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 boom. And then why don't you double duck and then like the double hand spring and then the double cut. No, no, PD, that's too much. You're getting me into it now. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. Like, but I just, I just want him to like every single time, like, yeah, do all your stuff. You know, it's probably a yeah. bad producer in me, but you know, he's the world champ. So I can say that stuff now. Right. right? Yeah. Hey, hey. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about when you realized you were going to be the champ, the conversation that came with it? Were you, were you shocked? I mean, did you see it coming? I'm always interested to hear about the talent when the company comes to them and said, Hey, we're putting the strap on you. Can you talk a little bit about that moment going into, Whoa, I'm, I'm about to be the impact world champion. Man. I found out that day. I didn't, yes. <laughs> I didn't pry, you know what I'm saying? I didn't pry about anything. I didn't ask about anything. I just, you know, like I said, I go out and, you know, do what I do. Like, I don't ask. I don't go up and all, hey, what do you think we should do? Like, I just let it come. And when, you know, we are seeing how the story played out. You never, you know, want to assume anything. But, you know, I found out, you know. It was just like, man, that's a great honor. It's awesome, and I can't believe it. That's it's it's. It was just a great feeling, you know what I'm saying? It was humbling, and you know, it's it's just a, a great honor to be, you know, have that bestowed upon me. You know what I mean? Like, and then now it's like, all right, I want to do everything I can to make this right and get a great decision. You know. 
Guys? Uh, I have a question. I always ask this to every professional wrestler. You talked about your trainers being old school. Can you tell me about the trainers that you had that inspired you to be you? Yes, yeah. First, uh, it was a, a person uh, named Dirty Deeds, Darren Wise. He came from North Pennsylvania. And uh, <laughs> he, uh, he had this school. Uh, it was National Championship Wrestling. And I was just a young punk kid coming from Baltimore, just moving up. And I had done a little bit of training before with some of my friends that I wrestled with in the backyard. And uh, we'd go to this school in Maryland. Uh, it was called Eastern Wrestling Alliance. Um, and it was ran by a dude named Jim Christian, who was another like type of old school guy. And we'd like clean up and everything like that and open up and close the school and all that. And he'd let us train there and he'd teach us the basics. But then I had to move due to circumstances and, you know, moved to Pennsylvania and got hooked up with Dirty Deeds there and Wise. And, I busted my ass in York, Pennsylvania at like little odd jobs and like doing it the right way instead of doing it the knucklehead way. And, you know, paid off my training $3,000 and uh, they're like 3500 or something like that. Worked all summer, made um, and freaking like, but he was just like, oh, be here at this time. And when I still be here at this time, uh, he needs to be here 30 minutes early. And I'm like, all right, yeah, he's right. Be there 30 minutes early. If, you know, you get there late, I'm getting chopped up. <laughs> Stuff like that. <laughs> but <laughs> then, you know, uh, there was a guy from my area from Baltimore who also came through. Who was, his name was Adam Flash. Um, and he was uh, really good in independence and uh, he came through and was like a father figure to me and like worked with me and took me to show, took me to Maryland Championship Wrestling, took me uh, to all these like different regional promotions, uh, Jersey All Pro, CZW. And then I connected, you know, with another one. His name was Ray Alexander. And he'd come in. And on the days where schools were supposed to be like, uh, like the rest of school was supposed to be closed. He'd come and he'd have the extra key and he'd like, come on, it'd be 12 o'clock at night. I'd get off of work. He'd be in there training with me like all night. You know what I'm saying? Like I owe it to these guys like, cause they instilled hard work and dedication in me, you know? And so, you know, just working with those guys, like and learning from like guys like Trent Acid and, and Ruckus and Johnny Cashmere and EJ Hyde, like guys like that, they just instilled hard work. And so I just took that everywhere I went, you know. You know, I know that you've been over to Japan a few times. And, you know, I've been a fan of Japanese wrestling a lot of, you know, most of the major promotions um, mm -hmm. for a long, long time. And the one thing that, you know, I always fail to ask, you know, somebody that's come on the show that I know has that experience over in Japan, you know, obviously there's the language barrier there. And... Mm -hmm probably have the agents that are bilingual or whatever. But my, mm. uh, I guess my question is, is what, after your first trip over there, um, how, how did that experience sort of round you out or, or, or what did you take from that and apply to what you, what you do over here? Albeit there are two different styles or, you know, and, and you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit different now, I think, because you have so mm -hmm. much cross pollination with the companies and things. But what did you yeah. take from that first experience? Uh, just seeing how much uh, they just wanted everything to be so crisp and they wanted things to be so uh, matter of fact and the way that they looked at professional wrestling and the way that they, you know, made their matches, uh, the way they structured their matches, the way they structured their shows, uh, how the fans, you know, perceived professional wrestling like taking all that in was like okay i feel like if i use this type of style if i you know mix it in with what i do you know and they teach you that because the company i was wrestling with was dragon gate pro wrestling and they were trained by ultimo dragon 
Uh, and at first it was Tor- Torimon, uh, and they, you know, they kind of used the lucha based style, but mixed in with a little comedy, but mixed in with strong style and high flying aerial maneuvers. And so, but within their dojo, uh, they would, you know, once their young boys would get to a certain level, they would teach them, you know, uh, every single style, you know, they were taught. It. And I'd sit back and I'd jump in the ring with them. I'd learn. I'd be training with them. And so from like 19 to maybe 25, I was going and then, and then back and forth to Japan. I'm, what was it, 25 now? Maybe 24. Yeah. Uh, I was going back and forth and I'd go. I'd stay for three months and then I'd come back and do Dragon Gate USA for like two days and then go back for three, for three months. And I was doing that like from 19 to 24. And like, so just doing that and getting that experience and doing those shows to where they're working in like Nagoya or working Cork and Hall uh, or working like Osaka, Perfectual, like Arena, like, Kobe world which like seats like 30,000 like when you're getting that opportunity and see how they work I just took that and again and instilled that with me and just used everywhere I went and you know in Japan their style is just so I feel like it's the best professional wrestling model like the best style that you could ever like try to you know adapt or try to like use i love i love wrestling japan well you there know. is definitely that japanese psychology the strong style and you know you've got so many different promotions over there and you know mm-hmm. I, I, but you know something that you just said that just was really interesting to me is the longest i ever was over there was for like a month and that and being as you know an american in that country for a month where nobody speaks english and yeah. it's really hard to communicate. There's no street signs in English. There's nothing, you know? No, you know, there isn't. The drivers don't speak English or anything like that. You got to yeah. get the food and all that stuff. How did you sort of keep sane, you know, being over there for, for that long and that isolated? Yeah, you know, there were, I did have my moments like uh, uh, Shingo and Yamato and Shima, those guys. Uh, they kind of taught me phrases and taught me, you know, how to kind of get by a little bit, you know, uh, taught me a little ni han go. So I could, when somebody was speaking to me, I could kind of understand a little bit, like after like maybe the second or third year after I was going. But in the beginning, oh man it, it, it felt like you were in like on an island you know on your own like like you said there's nothing you know nobody speaks english or if they do they want to kind of kayfabe you until you like get it till you get to know them it's like hold on wait a minute time out like wait a minute i've known you for you did not just pick up your conversation <laughs> like like you'd be like no man you english <laughs> The Russian yeah. hockey players are like that too. Uh, they, yeah. they want to answer uh, no English, no English, no, no English. Yeah, yeah, they, oh no English. I mean, uh, there's a, a couple of uh, people. I won't put his put his name out there. I love him, but there's a, a older Japanese wrestler who tried to play that, and uh, he didn't know that I spoke a little. And he was like, uh, "Oh, Ingo." He was like, oh, I don't speak English. I was like, oh, Ingo Wakata Nai. Oh, Niango Tao Wakata Nai. Oh, Niango Sochi Wakata Nai. Oh, no, what does you want to do? So, I'm not Genki. And he was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, don't play that. Don't play that with me, motherfucker. I gotcha. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I remember uh, I went to go to Kurikin one time with uh, when I was over there and would go see a Noah show. And uh, one of my friends was was one of the ring boys. Uh, yeah. And um, they, I think he wrestled in a soccer pro, but, like he was like a man of the 296. And, oh, um, um, but but um, 
I, I wanted to meet Masawa. Masawa was one, was one of my heroes. And he go, and the lady who's bringing me back says he doesn't speak English. He doesn't do any of this right. And I have this, this doll or a toy, whatever. And I wanted to sign it for me. So yeah. I go back and he's right there and there he is. And he's, you know, the green, the whole thing. And I'm just kind of like dumbfounded. And I go, it's really nice to meet you. And in perfect English, he looks at me and goes, very nice to meet you too. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> English. So, so. Yes, they are. It's, it's, I don't know what it, I mean, it's funny to me. I love it. Like, that's so awesome, though. I would have loved to met Masawa. He is awesome. Hmm. Anything Did, else, guys? Yes. Yes. I have, I, have, I have something real quick. Are you ever by yourself in the undead realm? Hey, you never know. I might turn into, you know, <laughs> an undead broom out here. You know, <laughs> you know, you know. Too young, Susie, Susan, incredible <laughs> character. I mean, makes me laugh. Yeah, well, not was... Sue Young. She used to scare the shit out of me. <laughs> Susie, and then Susan, she just, I mean, I mean, great, great act. I mean, I, I love it. I, I absolutely love it. So I would, I would, if, if you were to go heal, I would like to see you be like the brother zombie. Yes. <laughs> yes, I'd be out there with it. Yes. I love it. <laughs> All right. Hey, or come out. <laughs> no surrender from no the 13th. Uh, we're all excited. We're definitely going to be watching. We're going to be rooting for you and Tommy Dreamer. I think this show's kind of mixed down the middle on who we're rooting for. We're really excited. I'm going for Rich. Uh, I'm going for Rich, too. Just down the middle. Uh, Tommy needs a beating. My brother <laughs> yeah. this is not going to have me go for anybody other than Rich. <laughs> <laughs> all right, exactly. Here. I... I followed the meat hook. Yeah. Okay. There's one guy going for Tommy on the show, and that's he's not here tonight. So we're excited. Uh, for everybody, the show's over for us. Hang out. Uh, when I end this, we'll say our goodbyes and all that stuff. We're excited. Rich, one more time, thank you so much for your time tonight. You've made, what, four or five of us super-duper happy right now. So thank you. Yeah, I want to uh, just, just close off with a comment and just say, you know, I'm so happy to see – that you're the face of the, that, that promotion. You deserve it. You know, I've watched you for a long time and what you've become and what you've come into. And it's like, it's super awesome. You're, you're somebody I can believe in. You're like, uh, you know, you're like a great baby face. You're up there with Ricky Morton, in my opinion. Um, I don't ever think that you could ever be a heel. So listen to me, because I know a lot of things. About <laughs> and uh, so stay a baby face because and you're probably going to be a natural heel when you go over to AEW anyway. So it's just. Hey. No. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? It's, it's super awesome. And it's great to see that like somebody who's worked as hard as you is finally getting what he deserves. And it's super. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm sort of overwhelmed by this experience, but thank you for coming. I appreciate it so much. That means so much. Like that means so much. I can't even like put in the word. It really. I does. think Lars said it really, really well. But it's great to see also the guys that we cheer for on TV, and not only for the wrestling skills, but I love the fact of the message that you send, the positivity, but also too, it's the hard work. That's what you I got from you today is that everything you got, you appreciate, but you work for. Continued success, buddy. We'll be cheering you on, man. Thank you. Yes, sir. I appreciate and, and, that. And Rich, the words that you said about togetherness as a, a nation as a whole, that's what I preach to my kids. I'm a high school baseball coach after being a major league baseball player, and I preach that to, to the kids. You know, in order for us to, to be together, we got to, hey, forget our faults, man. It's about what we all love. We're only here on one planet, and, exactly. and, and this is what it's all about. So, I mean – I always liked you, but you took it to another level when you said that. I appreciate that. And I mean it wholeheartedly. Like, I mean it, you know. Pete? Yep. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, Rich, I'll see you next week, all right? <laughs>
<laughs> Spoken like a true agent. Spoken like a true agent. And, and by, by the way, Richard, oh. dropping the belt to Tommy. All right, we'll see you next week. <laughs> front, front office <laughs> oh, Rich, seriously, though, thanks, man. Uh, you, you made all of our nights tonight, probably all of our weeks, months, who knows. Um, but thanks for stopping by, man. We really appreciate it. No, thank you for having me again. Like I said, anytime you guys want Don't me, say on, that. Like, do I'm not say that you're on next week and the week after. Now you screwed up. You screwed hey. up. <laughs> Careful, Rich. That is collects guys. Look at I, that. It started with him and Petey in a closet. Look at. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but belts, I collect talent. I don't know. All right. Dennis.